Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's see common base configuration. It is one of the configurations of BJT. So in the common base configuration, as the name itself says, here the base terminal is common between the input and output circuit. So if you look at the circuit, you can see this is BJT. This BJT is of type NPN transistor. Means this end is N, this end is also N and this region is P that is the base. Two N regions are emitter and collector. And similarly if you look at the second circuit, this is again BJT with P and P transistor. This is P region, this is N region, this is P region. So you can have a common base configuration out of NPN transistor also, PNP transistor also. Now if you look at the NPN transistor circuit, here the base terminal, we call it as this as the base terminal. This base terminal is common between the input side and to the output side. Means we are going to apply the input signal here and we are going to take the output here. So base is common between these two. This side I call it as input side, this side we call it as output circuit. Here base is common. Similarly in this circuit we can say this is the base terminal. It is common between the input side and the output side. And which is the input terminal here? Emitter is the input terminal. So because of the emitter is the input terminal here, we are calling this current flowing in the input side is the emitter current. So here you can see input current is the emitter current. And here the junction is emitter to base junction. If this is emitter, emitter to base junction, here we are going to get. And the voltage between the emitter base junction is called as input voltage, that is VB. And one more thing here we need to observe is that we need to forward bias the emitter base junction and we need to reverse bias the collector base junction. That is what the rule we say in biasing of BJT. So here also if you want to use this common base configuration as an amplifier, we need to bias emitter base junction as forward biased and collector base junction as reverse biased. That's why if you look at the bias voltages VEE and VCB, this can also be written as VCC, these two voltages are with respect to the biasing. This is emitter and this is base. So emitter base should be forward biased. That's why in NPN transistor, this is N, this is P region. So positive end of this VEE will be connected to P and negative end will be connected to N. So this makes this input side forward bias now. Similarly, collector base junction, this is collector, this is base should be reverse biased. This is N type, this is P type region. So positive end of VCC will be connected to N type and negative end of VCC will be connected to P type. This becomes reverse biased. This satisfies the criteria of forward bias and reverse bias of these two junctions. Similarly, that will be applicable for PNP transistor which is operating as amplifier also. You can also see here P region, this is P, this P is connected to positive terminal, this is N region that is base connected to negative terminal that is making the emitter base junction forward biased. Similarly, the collector base junction reverse biased. You can also treat this as VCC. This is how the external voltages VEE and VCC are going to be connected. Now input current is IE and input voltage is VBE. Similarly, if you look at the output side circuit here in both the circuits, if you say output current is the collector current. Why? Because collector terminal is the output terminal. And similarly, output voltage, if you consider the voltage between the collector and the base, here also collector and the base, this becomes the output voltage. Now we need to understand the characteristics of common base configuration. First is input characteristics. Input characteristics is that we are going to plot the curve between the voltage that is input voltage VBE or you can treat it as VEB depending on the configuration which you are going to take and IE that is emitter current. So if we keep on increasing this VBE or VEB, how this IE is going to vary. And one more condition here is that we need to keep the output voltage constant. For a certain amount of output voltage, what is the input current variation when we are going to vary the input voltage? That is the input characteristics here. 
as we start increasing VBE from 0, you can see here the current IE is increasing. For VCB is equal to 0 volts, this is the curve. By keeping VCB is equal to 10 volts, this is the curve. And here what we can observe is that emitter current is increasing rapidly. If there is a small variation in the emitter to base voltage, there is a large variation in the current that is IE. IE will increase, IE will increase rapidly if there is small variation in VBE we can say. That is how we can explain this input characteristics by keeping this VCB to a constant value. This we need to keep it in mind. And here we can also write the input resistance expression. What is the input resistance expression here? Resistance at the input side can be written as change in voltage that is if you take it as VEB divided by change in the current that is IE at VCB to a constant value. This is how we are going to write the expression for resistance that is R in. And if you look at the output characteristics, here what happens? Output characteristics is IC that is output, output current with respect to the output voltage. This is output voltage. Output voltage is in between collector to base. Here we need to keep the input current constant. Here we need to keep the input current constant. What happens here? Once we start increase this VCB, you can observe for VCB is equal to 0 also at some point of IE, if IE is there, we will be having IC also. Why? Because IC will be almost equal to IE and you might know the expression IE is equal to IB plus IC where IB is very small. So if you have IE already, IC follows that. That's why even if 0 voltage, there will be some current already available at, the, at IC that is output current. For different values of IE, if you look at the current IC will be totally depend on this IE. It is less dependent on VCB. Why? Because even if VCB increases, this current IC is at the constant value. Up to this extent, the current is increasing if you observe. After this time, current will be constant. What we can say here, current IC will be constant not proportional to not proportional to VCB. It will be proportional to current IE. This is what we can say. Similarly, here also we can write output resistance. Output resistance will be equal to change in the voltage VCB with respect to change in the current at IE is equal to constant at some constant IE. This is about the output characteristics. And for this, if you use this common base configuration as an amplifier, the current amplification factor we can define and also we can write the expression for output current. Here the current amplification factor is alpha. What alpha says, it is the variation in IC with respect to the variation in IE. Means what is IE here? It is input current. What is IC here? Output current means what current amplification factor says by this factor IC is increasing with respect to IE. So this is with respect to AC quantity is considered. If you neglect the AC quantity for writing for the DC values alpha will be equal to IC by IE and also we know that IC will be always nearly equal to IE. So numerator is somewhat lesser compared to IE. It is too much near but but IC is smaller than IE. So this alpha never goes beyond 1. So alpha will be always less than we can say alpha, alpha will be always less than 1. It will be always equal to 0.9 and onwards. That is how we can define alpha. And also we can write by this expression IC will be equal to alpha times IE and one more parameter here we are going to add up that is leakage current. What is this leakage current is? If you observe here, this is IC we are talking about with respect to this input current IE. When there is an open terminal here, when there is an open terminal uh, with respect to the emitter as well as base. Here this I leakage is nothing but it is the leakage current flows between 
द कलेक्टर एंड बेस टर्मिनल दट दट वी काल इट ऐस ईसीबीओ इन अदर वर्ड्स वी आल आलो रईट इट ऐस ईसीबीओ वाट दिस ईसीबीओ इज मीन इट ईज द करे ड्यू टू द मैनारीटी क्यारियर्स अक्रॉस बेस टू कलेक्टर जंक्षन हियर इन द बेस टू कलेक्टर जंक्षन because of the minority carriers if we consider that is the extra current we call it as the leakage current added up with this that is ic is equal to alpha into ie plus icbo we can write so now the expression becomes ic will be equal to alpha times ie plus icbo this is how the expression we are going to write here as we know ie what is ie here ie will be equal to ic plus ib so if you write this so ic will be equal to alpha into i am going to replace this ie by ic plus ib ic plus ib plus icbo this is the expression now if i take ic together ic will be it is ic i am taking this multiply this and take it to one side it is 1 minus alpha is equal to alpha remaining is ib alpha times ib plus ic bo and here if we write the expression for ic again ic will be equal to this alpha i am going to take divided by 1 minus alpha into ib plus ic bo divided by 1 minus alpha now in any problems if you want to find out ic the if they have given alpha ie and also the leakage current ic bo we can use this expression we can also use this expression and again if we rearrange this expression so i am going to write ic by ib one side and i am not going to consider this i am going to neglect this since it is a leakage current if it is ic bo is very small now this expression becomes alpha divided by 1 minus alpha here what is ic by ib this ic by ib is ic by ib is equal to beta so if you replace this by beta now we can also write the expression for beta as it is alpha divided by 1 minus alpha this is also the expression we can derive from this this is about common base configuration in the next video let us see common emitter configuration and the characteristics thank you